Hey everyone, it's the Cinema Dude, and welcome back to my channel. And uh, I'm back after a little three-week uh, break. I've uh, been very busy with uh, work and with wedding stuff, so I uh, wanted to come back and uh, give you a new video today. Uh, I'm going to push off the um, vinegar syndrome stuff and the what's in the queue to the next few weeks. Um, yesterday I was able to stop to a Barnes & Nobles and uh, take part in their uh, Criterion sale. So I just picked up four uh, releases this time. Um, two releases finish off a filmography of uh, one director. Another release does the same thing. Uh, and then I got a nice cool box set too. So let's hop right into it. And we'll start with the two releases that go with one director. And uh, these are films of John Waters. Uh, so kind of a big kind of John Waters fan. Um, kind of learned through him through uh, some of my fiance's friends and stuff. Um, and so I have uh, Female Trouble and um, Multiple Maniacs. Uh, so I wanted to finish up that. So first I got uh, Polyester. Uh, and this is from 81, uh, starring uh, Tab Hunter and Divine. Uh, and uh, so this, oh, there you go. So in there as well, you get uh, an essay, but there's also the poster as well on there. Uh, and then a Odorama card. Uh, like what they used to do with the old releases and such. Um, that, so it's kind of cool inside. Uh, and it says, uh, in his first studio picture, filth maestro John Waters took advantage of his big biggest budget yet to allow his muse divine to sink his teeth into a role unlike anything he had played before. Baltimore housewife Francine Fishpaw a heroine worthy of a Douglas Cirque melodrama. Blessed with a keen sense of smell and cursed with a philandering pornographer husband, a parasitic mother, and a pair of delinquent children, the long-suffering Francine turns to the bottle as her life falls apart until deliverance appears in the form of hunk named Todd Tomorrow, uh, played by Tab Hunter. Enhanced with odorama technology, then... Uh, enables you to scratch and sniff along with Francine. Polyester is one of uh, water's most hilarious inventions, replete with stomach churning smells, sadistic nuns, AA meetings, and foot stomping galore. Uh, for, for this one, um, let me just see when this was. This was this was a 2019 release for this. Uh, it's a 4K digital transfer, uh, supervised by John Waters himself. Uh, there is an audio commentary featuring Waters from the 1993 Criterion Laserdisc release of the film. Uh, new conversations between uh, Waters and critic Michael Musto. Um, new program featuring interviews with water collaborators Tab Hunter, uh, Dennis Dermoni, Pat Morin, Vincent Perino, Mink Stoll, Mary Garwin, and Greg uh, Yelton. Interviews from 1993 with... Uh, Crew members Morin, Perino, and Van Smith. Archive interviews with Waters, Morin, actress Divine, and Edith Maisie. Uh, including footage from the making of the film. 20 minutes of deleted scenes and alternate takes. Trailers. And then uh, you have the uh, essay as well. So that is Polyester. Uh, and then this is actually a, a new release within the last two weeks, I want to say. Uh, and that is Pink Flamingos. Um, this one is from 72. Um, this is probably, if you want to say, like, his most famous film, I would say, is Pink Flamingos. I mean, you do get later on with Hairspray and Serial Mom. And I would say those are more of, like, his more mainstream films. Uh, but this one, I think, is the one that, like, if you think of John Waters, all Pink Flamingos is, like, what comes up and stuff. Um, so this, uh, like I said, just came out within the last two weeks from 1972. Uh, John Waters made bad taste pervasively transcendent with the forever shocking counterculture sensation Pink Flamingos, his most infamous 
and Dairy Cinematic Transgression. Uh, Diva Divine is iconic as the uh, wanted criminal Babs Johnson hiding out from her family of generates in a trailer outside Baltimore while reveling in her tabloid notoriety as the filthiest person alive. When a pair of sociopaths, Mink Stoll and David Lockery, with a habit of connecting women in order to impregnate them to attempt to challenge her title, Divine resolves to show them and the world the true meaning of the word filth. Uh, incest, cannibalism, shrimping, and film history's most legendary gross-out ending, Waters and his merry band of dreamlanders leave no taboo unsmashed in this gleefully uh, subversive ode to outsider hood in which camp spectacle and pitch black satire are wielding in an all-out assault on respectability. Uh, so this is a 4K uh, digital restoration supervised and approved by John Waters. Uh, Divine Trash, a feature-length 1998 documentary by Steve Yeager about Waters and the making of Pink Flamingos. Uh, featuring interviews with cast and crew, uh, there are two audio commentaries from uh, featuring Waters. Uh, one from the 1997 Criterion Laserdisc and the 2001 DVD release. Uh, new conversations between John Waters and filmmakers Jim Jarmusch. Uh, a tour of the film's Baltimore location led by Waters. Uh, deleted scenes and alternate takes, trailers. Uh, there's an essay by Howard Hampton and a piece by actor and author Cookie Muller about the making of the film from her 1990 book, Walking Through uh, Clear Water in the Pool Painted Black. Um, so yeah, so first off, this is uh, one of the first Criterion slipcovers covers in a long time. Uh, kind of a nice sturdy one as well. Um, and so it looks like a uh, brown paper bag. Uh, and then you have Divine herself. And then um, on the back it says, uh, John Waters, Pink Flamingos, Portrait of the Filthiest Person Alive. So it looks like an art piece. This is actually kind of a cool release. So then it comes with a uh, barf bag, um, which I believe it was the Reaper... Um, Reproduction of what they gave out at the theaters during the time. And then you also have, which is, this is kind of cool. Um, so it's a little kind of booklet with the essay in it. Um, but it looks like a tabloid magazine. So that finishes up uh, so far what Criterion has released. Uh, from John Waters' filmography. Um, I know Kino, I believe, has the rights to uh, Cry Baby with Johnny Depp. Um, Serial Mom is with uh, Shout Factory. Uh, so uh, there's a few more uh, that could be released and or if they get the rights to the other ones as well. All right, now to the uh, next director. Um, I have two of his films with uh come drink with me and dragon in and that is king who and uh the other one i was missing was a touch of zen from 1971. um so this is uh it says visionary visionarily barely begins to describe this masterpiece of chinese cinema and martial arts movie making a touch of zen by king who uh describe or depicts the journey of Yang, a future of noble woman in disguise who seeks refuge in a remote and allegedly haunted village. The sanctuary she and her three companions find with a shy scholar is shattered with an inferior swordsman uncovers her identity, pitting the five against legions of blade-wielding opponents. At once a wuxia film, uh, the tale of spiritual quest in, the, in a study in human nature, a touch of Zen is an unparalleled work of Hu's a formal career in an epic of the highest order, characterized by breathtaking action cinematography or choreography, excuse me, uh, stunning widescreen landscapes and innovative editing. So this release was from 2016. Uh, here you get a 4K digital restoration 
uh, a documentary from 2012 on King Hu, uh, new interviews with accurate with actors uh, Hu Feng and Xu Chung, uh, a new interview with filmmaker Ang Lee, uh, a new interview with uh, film scholar Tony Raines, uh, a trailer, and then uh, there is an essay. Uh, by Phil Seller, David Boardwell, and notes by Hugh from the 1975 Cannes Film Festival press kit. So yeah, so more uh, martial arts uh, films, and again, I want to finish, kind of finish off uh, his filmography as well. And again, just like um, with the uh, polyester one, it is a poster. And then it has the essay on the back of that. Very cool on that as aspect. And then lastly, uh, the big box set, and one that I've had on the list since uh, it was um, released last year, uh, but this is the Once Upon a, Once Upon a Time in China, uh, the complete films uh, set. So this includes six films uh, in the set, um, and this is the kind of stories and adventures of uh, Wang Fei Hong. Um, for those that don't know, Wang Fei Hong was kind of it, he's a folk hero in uh, China. Um, they've had many, many films about him. Um, at one point, there was a series um, that had like about 80 films uh, just of him doing different uh, things. And But uh, he was a real-life uh, martial arts master, uh, a physician, and kind of a folk hero, kind of protected, you know, the... Um, lower class and stuff. So, uh, these are kind of all the films. Um, the first three, um, star, uh, Jet Li, um, and they are, um, directed by, uh, Troy Hart. Um, and then the next ones are filmed with, let me just see who the other, let's see, that's that one. That's, yeah, four is, the first three are by Troy Hart uh, with uh, Jet Li in it. The uh, fourth one is, has uh, Vincent Zhao playing Wong, Far, Wong Fei Hong. Uh, but that is also directed by um, Yang Bun. Um, and then the fifth one also has Vincent Zhao in it, but, uh, uh, Choi Hart comes back. And then with, uh, included in this set too is, um, Once Upon a Time in China in America, which is directed by Sammo Hung. Uh, so it's kind of cool to have that in here as well. I wonder if they give any information on that one. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, as you can see, uh, it is a uh, fold out. And as you can see, you get one, two, three, four, five, and then Once Upon a Time of China and America. Uh, you also get uh, this nice booklet, actually. Uh, it is around uh, 44 pages. Um, so it gives you some, gives you the films, uh, briefly talks about them, along with cast and crew, some photos from it, um, and then after that you have a um, essay by Maggie Lee, and then you also have one by Grady Hendrix, um, who did the um, these fist break bricks uh book that came out uh just recently too and it says the life of legend a brief history of wong fei hong on uh screen and let's see the one that was it let's see 
Yeah, Jackie Chan's played Wong, uh, Wong Fei Hong. Um, Jet Li has. Let's see. Uh, Quan Tai Hing was the actor who played him in 81 movies between 1949 and 1970. Um, but he was a more older um, one, um, whereas um, in the 70s, um, let's see, who played him during the 70s? Yeah, Gordon Liu played him as well. Um, so yeah, so a lot of them played him, but then really like with, um, Jet Li's performance, it's kind of like the right age where he would have been uh, during this time period and not too old, not too young and stuff with that. So, uh, nice booklet with that as well. So in here you get, uh, 4K digital restoration of Once Upon a Time in China and Once Upon a Time in China 2 and 3, a 2K restoration of 4 and 5. Um, you also have, and all presented with their original Cantonese theatrical release sound mixes. Um, you also have an alternate stereo Cantonese soundtrack for Once Upon a Time, uh, one and two, uh, featuring the original theatrical sound effects and monochrome Cantonese soundtrack for Once Upon a Time, China three, uh, Once Upon a Time, China and America from 97 is a 2K digital restoration. Uh, and it has the Cantonese soundtracks along with stereo Mandarin tracks with the voice of actor Jet Li. Uh, new interviews with director um, Chow Hark. Um, film workshop co-founder Nan Sum Su. Marco Mei Ching Sing. And critic uh, Tony Reyes. Um... Extra audio conducted by Lee, conducted in 2004 and 5. Deleted scenes from Once Upon a Time China 3. Documentaries from 2004 about the real life martial arts hero Wong Fei Hong. Uh, from Spikes to Spindles, a 1976 documentary about New York City's Chinatown featuring uncredited work by um, Chow. Um, experts from 2019 Masterclass given. By Yang Wo Ping. Um, that's kind of cool. Archive interviews as well, with, including Donnie Yen. Uh, behind the scenes footage from Once Upon a Time in China and Once Upon a China, Time in China in America. Uh, making of program from 97 about Once Upon a Time in China in America. Trailers, subtitles, and then you have like the book too. So, uh, so yeah, so a very cool box set to uh, break into and kind of cool that they have all the films uh, together in one uh, release. So another really, really cool um, one to add uh, to my martial arts collection. So yeah, so that was uh, just a little bit of the haul that I picked up uh, for the Barnes & Noble sale. So once again, the uh, Once Upon a Time in China Complete Films, A Touch of Zen, uh, the new release of Pink Flamingos and uh, Polyester. So, uh, like I said, very uh, just quick and little one uh, haul this time. Uh, we'll get back to the Vinegar Syndrome stuff and uh, what's in the queue in the next uh, two weeks as well. So, uh, comment below. What have you guys picked up from the Criterion sale? Um, is there anything that you're looking forward to? Um, I definitely had a stack and just cut it down. I was looking at the shaft uh, new release as well, along with some that I've uh, missed, uh, haven't picked up yet, uh, Citizen Kane, Double Identity, uh, so there's a few that I want to upgrade from what I have uh, with that as well. So comment below um, or what you look forward to for future releases by Criterion. So I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, thanks for watching and remember, be kind and rewind. We'll see everybody later.